Amen. So, so uh, Philip went down to a city here where there was a sorcerer that was at play prior to him getting there and prior to him preaching Christ. Amen. And in that same city used sorcery and bewitched the people of Samaria, Samaria, giving out that himself was some great one. So he was the one that was um, had all the attention, if you will, in that city before Philip came preaching Christ. Yeah. Amen. It says, to whom all gave he from the least to the greatest, saying, this man is the great power of God, and to him that laid, that had regard, because that of a long time he bewitched them with sorcery. Amen. Amen. But it says, but when they believed Phil's preaching, the things concerning the kingdom of God, in the name of Jesus Christ, see, he was still preaching Jesus Christ, they were what? Baptized. So in verses 5 through 8, it talks about the miracles that have been performed and how they received it. And here it says, not only that they received it in verse 12, but they were baptized, both men and women. Amen. So that is what happens once we preach Christ. Amen. If you look at the latter part of uh, uh, Acts chapter 2, I believe it's verse uh, 37, after Peter had preached there, uh, there was a question that was asked, and it was, um, what shall we do? What shall we do? Now that we, now that they received the word of God and they had faith in it, they had asked the question, what shall we do? And of course, in 2 and 38, it says, repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus and you shall receive the Holy Ghost. So here they accepted the word of God. Now they were baptized. And it says, then Simon himself believed also. So even Simon believed. He was a sorcerer. So he, he, he believed. Amen. If we properly teach the word of God, even those that were wicked will, yeah. will, will, will hear it also. Amen. Amen. But we, but we want people to be fully persuaded. Fully persuaded. I believe Paul preached, teaches about that in Corinthians. We want people to be fully persuaded. So we, that's why yeah. we continue and continue to have Sunday services and Sunday night services yeah. and Bible class and Sunday school and Christian education and other things so we can continue to have the word of God taught in here so we can get fully rooted and grounded in the word of God, amen, that it will continue to be fully in our hearts and our minds, amen, that when Satan continues to come with his fiery darts, we will have a built up shield of faith that will withstand those things that will come upon us, amen. We're still going to get sick. We're still going to have financial troubles from time to time, but our faith is leaning and depending upon Jesus Christ. Amen. And then it says that Simon himself believed also when he and he was baptized. Mm -hmm. So Simon mm -hmm. believed yeah. and he was baptized. Yeah. And he continued with Phil and wondered, beholding the miracles and signs that were done. So he believed and was baptized also. It says, but now it came to the point where the apostles came down to verify the works of, of, of Philip and what was going on in Samaria. So Peter and John came on the scene and and who, in verse 15, says, who they were come down and pray for them that they might receive the Holy Ghost. Amen. Yeah. So they have received the Holy Ghost at this point, but they have received God and gained faith in him and were acting and exercised their faith by being baptized. Yeah. Amen. So the apostles are basically, should we say, the elders of the church. Amen. Because Philip was just an evangelist, but now the apostles came and saw that they didn't have the Holy Ghost. So they laid hands on them mm -hmm. that they might receive. And verse 16 said, because yeah. that none of them have received it yet. But verse 17 said, they laid their hands mm -hmm. on them and they received yeah. the Holy oh. Ghost. Amen. So they received the Holy Ghost. So now they have the Spirit of God in them, according to um, the upper room experience in Acts chapter 2. It says, but now here we go back to this character. And Simon, verse 18, and when Simon saw through the laying on of the apostles' hands, the Holy Ghost was given. He offered them money. So here we go with this little sorcery tricks. Amen. He, because uh, that was in his background. Now he is newly turned over to the faith by hearing Christ, but he still had some things in him that he needed to get worked out. Amen. So he saw, because he, he was still one of the power hungry, amen, one of the, basically, because he one was the one that had, was being sought as being great in that city, amen, and now they're seeing this other man coming and preaching, even though he believed, 
but he saw the power that was going forth, so he still wanted to have that power. Yeah. Amen. So uh, he said, saying, give me also this power that on whomsoever I lay hands, he may receive the Holy Ghost. But Peter said unto him, here we go, Peter, he's always had one in the new church was that vocal one that really spoke out here in the early preaching. It says, thy money perish with thee because thou has thought that the gift of God may be purchased with money. Thou hast neither part nor lot in this matter for the heart, for thy heart is not right in the sight of God. Amen. So we will, so Simon's heart wasn't right. Even though he heard the word of God, he believed it. Yes. And even went forth and baptized, got baptized, but his heart wasn't pure. Amen. His heart wasn't fully pure. And Peter scoped that out when he came about and asked him for money to have this power that they had. But this power was given by God. Amen. And as we continue on, it says, um, verse 22, it says, so Peter told him he needed to repent. Amen. So that was part of the criteria in Acts 2 and 38. So he had to repent of this issue that he still dealt with. Therefore, of this wickedness, and pray God, and perhaps thy, the thought of thy heart may be forgiven thee, for I perceive that thou art in the gale, gale of bitterness and in the bond of iniquity. Then answered Simon and said, Pray ye to the Lord for me, that none of these things which ye have spoken come upon me. And they, and they, when they had testified, preached the word of the Lord, returned to Jerusalem, and preached the gospel in many villages in Samaria. Amen. So we're looking at Phyllis preaching here today. Amen. With a topic here for today's uh, lesson, uh, um, our purpose in preaching. Amen. And our purpose in preaching is to preach, to preach Christ and him crucified that people may gain faith in him and that they would um, turn their lives over to him. And then we will see signs and wonders as the scripture, as Jesus taught um, in the gospels, as was displayed here. And then they were baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And then they eventually filled, got filled with the Holy Ghost by the laying on of hands by the apostles. Amen. That is our, is our objective is to preach Christ or to preach faith. Well, faith come by hearing and hearing of the word of God. So we will every time we come to church or Bible class or some church setting, we are our purpose is to increase our faith. Increase our faith. That's why we come regularly because we only have a, I believe someone said probably out of a whole seven day week, there's probably only three to five hours that is truly dedicated of church time to um, the word of God. Amen. Depending on how regularly that you work attend. And that's not including if we have any personal time that we spend on our own dedicated day-to-day, -day, whether it's through prayer or reading the Word of God or even just playing music just um, to um, have an infiltration through our ear gate uh, of the Word of God. That's why I said um, the song selection is key because some songs don't preach about Jesus or God. Nope. Amen. So it's one thing to have something that sounds good. It's another thing that's going to actually help us. Amen. So that's why it's critical in what we're looking at in terms of our song selection. But uh, to continue to grow in faith, amen, is the key. And that is our purpose as preachers and putting ourselves in Philip's um, shoes is what he did. Amen. His purpose was to preach God that people may increase in faith, that they may in turn be filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> so that is our objective. So when we're dealing with people, whether it's in a counseling session, whether it's just um, friends having a conversation, we got to make sure that we sneak the word of God in there somehow, some way. Amen. We, in our, in our workplaces, or with, just with ourselves, or nevertheless, when we have the platform where we're on a panel or we have the pulpit to speak the word of God on our Sundays and classes to make sure that we're preaching and teaching and having a focus on Jesus, or even in choir rehearsals and for the choirs to sing and those in the prayer that we are focusing on Jesus, that we're increasing um, the faith in um, the man, men and women of God. Amen. We want to increase faith in people. Amen. Because we have that faith fear battle mm -hmm. or that spirit versus flesh battle. But if we continue to have hold on to God, hold on to Jesus and our faith in him, we have the victory. Amen. Mm -hmm. Thank God for the victory. Amen. And we're going to look at this a little bit further. Uh, 
Um, next week, we're going to continue start from verse 26 and read through verse 40 and kind of pick up on the same thing, but not from necessarily the preaching aspect, but from a witnessing standpoint. That's kind of the point I want to get at. It doesn't necessarily, yeah. um, once we read through that and you'll see uh, this familiar passage, but we're going to look at it from that aspect. Amen. We're going to look at Philip and his ministry. Amen. In this case, he was preaching. In this case, and the, um, the secondary case, um, the way I look at it, it was more of a witnessing. So we're going to kind of look at that avenue and what our responsibilities yeah. as uh, witnesses unto Christ. Amen. Our purpose in witnessing. Amen. So thank God for the word today. Thank God Amen. for this opportunity. I hope, hope I said something that um, gave you um, enlightenment in the scripture um, itself, as well as just encourage you um, in what we're trying to do in ministry. Um, we just love God. Um, I, th I thank God for all that he's done. I mean, yes. um, there are many things that are going on. People ha have um, issues of life that they're dealing with um, in, their, in their home, just personally, in, in, their, in their life. They're, um, they're fighting um, curses, things that are going on in their family, things dealing with their friends, things dealing with their finances. There are many people that have gone to college and haven't um, got degrees but do not have jobs in their, their fields of study. And um, just different issues of life that, that are going on. And we just want to um, pray for people that we are there to be a light unto them. That we um, will have an answer scripturally. Amen. They, they may not always want to hear it. But we everything that we talk about in, in encouraging people, we want to always have a spiritual or word of God. Uh, at least in terms of, of the principles. Amen. That we're talking with them. Lead them in that direction. Amen. We don't want to always, when we're talking to people, sound preachy because uh, people don't want to hear that when they're, um, when they're uh, are burdened down with um, issues of life and this, and this fear factor that we keep talking about. We want to find a way to build faith back into them. Amen. And sometimes we won't always, uh, like I said, sound preachy or over spiritual, but we, we got to have the principles of the word of God and in, in how we present whatever we're talking to to encourage people. To, um, if you will, talk them off the ledge of what they're battling with and turn their minds back unto Christ. Amen. Maybe one day I have an example that I, I that kind of came to mind that kind of set up this um, this um, part of the of scripture that I'm, I'm looking at. I didn't go into it a great deal, um, but I may do that um, maybe one week. I've had it for years, but I never really um, displayed it, so I may do that here in a few weeks. Uh, it, it, I think it's very powerful once you see it. Um, this um, fear versus faith. I'm, I'm going to I'm gonna have to write that down and, and um, use that um, demonstration to show uh, basically the growth of a Christian, amen, the fear, the fear versus faith, and kind of use that um, Galatians chapter 5 that we just talked about. But I just thank God for just another opportunity. I thank God for Lady Blessed bringing the word of God on last week. I thank God for um, the family that we're just sticking together through this pandemic here in the home, um, using wisdom, amen. This thing is, hasn't gone away. We're, if we watch the news, um, things are increasing. That's because I believe people aren't um, obeying the, the laws of the lands or the things that have been displayed, that um, instructions, should I say, amen, about wearing our mask and um, being, um, distancing ourselves and uh, staying home um, as much as possible. Um, if it's not necessary to be out, um, but um, people still want to go on vacations and do this and go shopping and all this and um, open up businesses because we're worried about the, um, our finances, the economy. But um, um, as they used to say, I believe there's an expression to my buyer, beware. Mm -hmm. <laughs> amen. Well, beware if you decide to do these things, amen, that there's a, an, an, an increased possibility of you contracting that virus, amen. So we must be careful. We, um, outside of Lady Blissett, who hasn't they still go out to her workplace because she works in a hospital, we are still staying at home outside of our weekly uh, store run. Um, that's basically about all we're pretty much doing. Amen. So we're just trying to be careful. Amen. Thank God for his covering of the blood. Amen. We know God is in control and we know that God is a healer should things happen. Um, just saw yesterday that I had a cousin that um, got contracted down in Atlanta. So we want to pray for her healing and all, all people that are. Um, dealing with that. Some of us are, are asymptomatic. We, we may have it, but we're um, just not sick. And then there's others that have um, just a few symptoms. And then there's those that are very, very ill. So we just want to continue to be prayerful. 
unto God. Amen. I just thank him for all that he's done. Uh, I'm looking forward to what seeing what God's going to do. We don't know when the day or the hour when he will come. He may come today. He may come tomorrow. Amen. It may be a few years, but we don't know. But we know there's a shifting and a transition in how we need to do things. Amen. From a script um, from a spiritual standpoint, in terms of presenting the word of God and getting it out there to the world, amen, and how the church is going to look different. We just got to be, um, the way we used to be having church for years is, is not going to be the same. At least that's, I've been kind of saying that myself for years, but I guess this was the opportunity that God told me to move forward, amen, and in different directions, still trying to figure things out and don't know how things are going to be, but we just want to be ready and active, amen. In um, the word of God, I thank God for all those that are supporting us, amen, and praying for us, amen. They may have seen us in a while, of course, due to this, even though some of the churches are opening, um, we're just using wisdom, staying home for the time being. But I just thank God that he is with us, amen. God is everywhere, amen. And I just thank God for um, his presence. Thank God for the word of God. Continue to pray for us, and uh, we will continue to pray for you. And we're going to um, dismiss with a prayer. Father God, in the precious name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you, O oh God, for this day, for this opportunity, O oh God. Continue to be with us, O oh God. Encourage us, O oh God. Amen. Even though we may be stuck in our homes for a while, amen, we know that we are not alone, that we have you, O oh God. We continue to meditate on you, O oh God. Keep you in our hearts, O oh God. Amen. We know we have other avenues outside of physical contact to continue to still be able to have fellowship and talk with our friends and our family members, amen, to stay in touch, amen. But we just glorify you, oh God, and pray that all may, we may remain safe, oh God. Keep your hands of protection and counsel around about us. Cover us with your blood, oh God. We just thank you, oh God. Bless all those that are sick, oh God, with this COVID-19, oh God. Touch their bodies and keep them and heal them, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. And Lord, whatever other infirmities or disease of oh God that may be in our bodies of oh God, Lord. We know that you're a healer and that you're able to do exceeding and abundantly above all that we could ever ask or think. And Lord, we just love and we praise and we magnify you, oh God. And we give all the glory and praise. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.